All right guys, what is going on? This is gonna be the third video in the Hydro Power Pelton wheel series because last time I tested on the hose and it was because the power, like the hose or the um, resistance of the motor on there was only like 0.1 amps or something or maybe it was one amp, maybe it was one amp, but we were getting one watt of power, I, th I think that's what it was. So I went out and I actually bought something that requires a little bit more power I mean, it's a nice day out today, but I have to print some new parts. The printer hot end has been messed up, so I am going to have to um, replace that. Uh, I have one in the mail, just waiting for that to come. I think it's on autofocus. But let me show you what I got to give a little bit more resistance, and I'll show you the setup I have on the table, just so I can test the power output, because the power of the last one at one watt, after for a 350 watt motor, wasn't sufficient, so I decided to go out and pick something up that would give me a little bit more. You can see here, this is still the uh, the Pelton wheel. does need a little, I would like to reprint this, and I actually have a new design with a little bit more aggressive scoop in the middle, because now it seems like it's still just kind of pushing, whereas the Pelton wheel, the power, if you don't know, what it, how, how it transfers the energy and momentum is the water hits here, has to turn around, and then push. A great test I could probably do in my sink is with a spoon. If you have a spoon facing, you know how when you go to wash a spoon, it just splashes up in your face? Well, that's kind of the same concept. It pushes harder, you can hold it in your hand and even see it. Versus if you flip the spoon, there's still pushing, water weight pushing on it, but not as much when you have to turn the water around. So with that design, this one's a little bit, it might be hard to tell the depth on the video, but it's not a very sharp transition. So I wanna work on that. And for the power, right here we got one of these little Road Shock, it's a defroster from Harbor Freight, it was like $10, cheapest thing I could think of, and only attached to a 15 amp rated auxiliary power socket. I think this is 12, it's a 12 volt, and I think it's rating is um, about 13 amps, so if my quick math is right, I think that's about like 156 watts, to correct, I'll correct at the bottom if that's wrong, but it has a little light on the front, I think on the and then it has a fan and heat. So I'll just try it with the fan, or the, with the light at first, just to make sure it's gonna work. Probably not gonna be much power or draw with just the light, but then we'll go from there. So, and to test it, I got the Milwaukee, so I can just put it on the nut here and spin it up. So, let me set this up and I will show you guys there. Also wanna start off by saying, these are backwards because the motor is pot, it's the normal direction, it spins this way, but because it's spinning this way. So I want to do the test on the way it's spinning. And there might be a bit of power drop through these thin gauge wires and the beautiful connection right there. So this is on the light mode. Let me just angle this camera down for you. And let's see, hope, I mean, oh, camera's falling over. In theory, I think well, this side or this side, oh, it's probably this side, maybe it's both. But it, there should be a little light that'll come on to confirm that it's working. I was looking at the power is actually up to like 14 volts. I don't know if I might have to angle it a little bit more so you guys can see. But there was so little resistance that it wasn't even registering with a wattage or amps. But I'll do it again so you guys can see. And the impact will lose probably a little bit of speed when there's resistance. But now that that's on, let's go to, I think, all right, so we'll try just the fan. So there should be a little bit of power draw with the fan, but not as much with the heater, because the heater, electric heaters take a lot of current, I believe. So let's see. There we go. So about 0.36 uh, amps, which was, I, th I think it was like 4.5 watts. So that's a pretty good start. We've now quadrupled the last video, and now let's see. I think it's, I mean, in theory, it, if it spins, it has slowed down a little bit already. So if it doesn't slow down, and then it's, it seems like this could be up to 150 watts, which, oh, it doesn't say it on here, but when I bought it, it was advertised as a 350 watt motor. A lot of the other motors that are exactly the same are advertised as 250 watts. So I'd like to see, but we've already produced 4.5, 4.5 watts, so 
Anything above that, I'll be pretty impressed. I would like to see, at the end of this project, I'm hoping to get, I mean, as long as you get enough resistance on it, then that's the wattage. But with a charge controller and something that uh, is a little heater, but it is interesting to see that it can already power the fan. So let's see if we can do the heater. Oh, definitely more resistance on it. So it's running into an issue where it's, it actually has enough resistance. Here, I'll try and spin it a little bit. So it has enough resistance where it's actually just making it do the impact. So I'll, maybe, I'm trying to start out slowly. I think it was about six, six and a half amps. I gotta look again. But I saw 50 watts, but it wasn't at the full voltage. So I'll do it again. Just, uh, I'll put the camera in a better spot so I can hold it. Seems like if I lay into it a bit, it works a little bit better. So about six and a half amps, so that's pretty good. I'm just gonna do the math on my phone real quick and see what that'd be. What was that? Hold on, let me see, I'll pause it. All right, so if you do that math out, it's six and a half amps, so roughly, it comes to 78 watts. So I'm wondering if the heater, once it warms up, if it draws a little bit more current, thus upping the power. But still, we got 50 watts. For the first test of the last video, with that little motor, which didn't do it, got, um. I really, I think it was one watt. I think we, I think the most we pushed, which was 12 volts, uh, we got one watt out of it. But now we can, we've proven that this motor can power certain things, which with water, this is just has, I mean, you can hold this back. I don't know if it's the heater that smells like it's burning or something smells like it's burning. But this doesn't take much to hold back. So that's why it's doing it. But I mean, as you can see here, this actually doesn't take much power, it's still all connected. Um, it doesn't take that much more force to spin. So I'd like to see, I, I'd like to see in the next video, I mean, if we just upped it from one watt to um, 50 watts, it's a pretty big jump. Actually, what I might try and do is I might take one of my, I have those little, the little motor that I put on there that require, like this requires like 2,500 RPM or something to make that 12 volts. Um, those motors, one requires a thousand RPM, one's like a hundred and ten RPM, or maybe that was a two hundred RPM motor, but whatever the gearbox on it on it reduces the RPMs needed. So what I might do is I want to see can one of those little motors output the same fifty watts or seventy eight watts. I don't know that that's a good idea. I probably shouldn't test it, but like you guys, maybe maybe not like you guys, but like me. I want to know. I want to know, can that little motor make the same power? Because you don't need the same RPM, but you would need a lot more torque. Like this, this, no, I don't think would spin it on there. I don't have any way to connect it. So what I'll do is I'll take the drill and I'll just take the drill and like put the chuck onto there. So I'll see. The only thing is I've tried the drill on this one time and it actually doesn't spin as fast as the impact, which is surprising because you figured the drill would have a little bit more. So I'm gonna test it out, but right now we are at 55, I think it's peaked at 55 watts. So that's pretty good. And if you guys like this content and you guys wanna see this progress, cause I wanna do the, I have a lot of 3D, once that part comes in for 3D printing, I have a lot of parts that I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna print out so I don't get splashed. And I'm actually gonna make them, I might make them available on Etsy or somewhere so then you guys can buy them and convert your own into it. But I need to make sure it's working, proof of concept. So new paddle wheel, this is almost everything will be coming new. The only thing that will stay the same is the base every in the motor. Everything else, the nozzle holder, the splash guard, all that will all be a new print, new files. So it's gonna be a little bit before the video, but drop a like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps me out, helps get these parts. It gives me more motivation. It doesn't, I don't have any sponsors and I don't make money off these videos, 
but it gives me the motivation. When I see you guys like it, I see comments, please give me suggestions, ideas, it really helps out. So I'm gonna grab that motor, and if you wanna see the power of that, stick around, because there's a lot of other hydro power coming in different videos. This is just the Pelton wheel style, and one that I would like to see run if you have a little stream or river with enough head pressure that it can run year round. But the next videos are gonna be focused towards slower moving water, but large amounts, so it has the torque and power to spin it. So let's grab that motor, and if, and if we'll see how that goes. If something blows up, it might blow up. We'll find out. So I actually have a bunch of these different motors. This one actually is in a, I have it pulled up a little bit, just so I could check the RPM, but this one's in a 3D printed sleeve for it. They're all different RPM, but they're all about the same. I mean, the color of the gearbox is a little different. This one's 550 RPM, this one's 110, and this one's 300, um, 300 RPM. I just had the drill on this one just to test it. This one takes a lot of torque, like, I mean, a lot of torque, and that's with nothing on it. You can see this one's been used a little bit. So, in the 110, I can only imagine it's gonna have a hard time spinning, so it's just kind of gonna be. Oh, actually, it's weird. The 110 is easier to spin than the 300. Hmm, I don't know, let's see. Cause like, I mean, you cannot, I mean, at least not the 300. Maybe you can turn this one by your hands. No, the 500, you can just turn it with your hands if you squeeze really hard. So I have a feeling um, I should try this one to see. But yeah, it's a DC-12, it's a gear to send, or Greer to send, I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce that. There you go. So in case you guys wanna look up these motors. Oh. Piece of cake. So I'm actually gonna throw the alligator clips on this one, and let's see how much power this one can make. I don't think these motors are rated for anything of the magnitude, but if you didn't have the gearbox on here, this motor makes 12 volts at 5,000 RPM, so there's quite a difference. I don't know that gear ratio off the top of my head, but that's about, one to, I guess, one to 10 or 10 to one. I guess that was about there. That's a pretty easy ratio, I guess. But all right, let me connect it, and let's see if it can actually even turn the thing on. We'll do the same thing where I test the light, fan, and then the heater. I don't want to just jump into the heater, because I don't think these motors are rated for 156 watts, but let's find out. All right, hopefully it'll be clear enough there, but let's see, I might be able to get everything in camera. All right, so about half throttle on setting two is about 12, 12 volts. And again, there's not enough draw, there's not enough current with the LED. Turn off the LED, I think this side should be the fan. So let's see. All right, so about four watts, same thing. So far, I mean, not that much torque. It didn't take much to hold it, but that's not where all the resistance will be. So all right, let's see if we can get, actually, let me make sure nothing's hot on this. Yeah, so far, so good. Oh, definitely a lot more, oh, this motor, a lot more resistance. So it doesn't seem like there's actually even enough RPM to get the current you need, or the voltage you need to turn on this uh, power analyzer. So I either might have to get a... Yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. I might have a thousand watt one of these laying around. I can try that, but I'm not sure that it's gonna have enough because the torque actually, it takes a lot to spin this. I mean, the gears are kind of, it's not warm, but it's not cold either, so I'll try that motor, and we'll go from there. All right, let's see. I'm not sure that this one's going to work. It's also a 24 volt at um, 1,000 RPM, so there's a chance that it might be, in theory, you would think it's 12 volts at um, 500 RPM, but... Yeah, no. Let's see, 
Maybe if I just try them with fan again. Yeah, see half throttle? See, that's what it was, it was probably doing something like this. Which is actually, maybe there's just too much power because it, it was definitely spinning faster when it was. See, it still lights up pretty early on before you, you even get the power display. Yeah, so I mean, it whited out, but that one I peaked it, so it's definitely making more power. But it should still, the RPM it's spinning at, it should have no problem. Like that's about the same. So I think that this just doesn't have enough current or something, because it's definitely making enough voltage to light up the light on the heater to let you know it's on, but there's not enough power for it to tell the um, power analyzer that it's running. So not sure there, but Looks like it's a good thing we're running with the big motor. So let me just, oh, the camera's now falling. But I don't know. So I'm gonna have to figure, it's, it, it's going to crap. Everything's falling apart, like my life. Um, but yeah, so I think that's gonna conclude this video. I'm gonna work on printing those new parts. By the time I make another video, it's probably gonna be with that on the hose or maybe I'll find somewhere where I have access to a lot of flowing water. There seems to be a bit around me. I don't know if I'm allowed to use it. But if you guys want to see it, I'm going to, well, even if you don't want to see it, I guess I'm still going to try, but I'm going to work my hardest, get this going so we can actually get 12 volts of power off water and a reasonable amount. But apparently, eventually this is going to switch over to a uh, charge controller and into a battery. I just don't know how those regulate power, so I'll have to do a little more research, but going from one watt to 55 watts in my book is a pretty good day. I'm sure I could just get a faster drill and get up to that 78 watts of power. So if you guys wanna see anything, if you have any suggestions, tips, or anything along those lines, maybe you just wanna leave a comment that you love me or that you don't love me. Either way, drop a comment, let me know. See you guys in the next one.